Okay, so I'm, I'm still here today. Right, so you can uh, directly to the sclera or to the capsule tension segment or to the CCC. Right, so you can do directly suture or you can do a CTS insertion to the back that you can step open and fixate it. Or you can even directly suture a, a fibrotic capsule ring to the sclera, but you know, I don't recommend this, it's not very stable because it's just a suture fixation point and generally you need three points. Right, or today we prefer, uh, you can do it also to the iris, alright, suture fixation to the iris like what I showed earlier in the case. Today what we prefer to do is intrascleral haptic fixation where you place the haptic into a scleral tunnel that like, makes it really very stable or as mentioned just a while ago, I will skip our L in the retropupillary space. So when you see a lens that's dislocated, right, an LL that's dislocated, you have to think about how you can retrieve this lens. Alright, so it may be in the capsular bag, it may not be. Right now, of course, if there's something that's on the macular, it's inaccessible to an anterior segment surgeon, please enlist the help of your colleague who does retro retina surgery. He will do a retractomy and bring this to the anterior segment, place it on the iris, and then you can decide whether it's planted, exchange it, or you can refix it and use the old lens. Now, with this free floating, it really depends on where the position is. If it's still quite deep, it's still better to get your retro retina colleague to help you. If it is a bit more anteriorly, you may be able to lift it up with a needle for a fast planer, bring it forward, which I generally do not recommend, although it is a known technique. I would rather use an anterior approach where you use either micro forceps or even a needle from the front, avoid the retro strands, and go in and lift it up. Okay. Now, sometimes the lens is hinged, okay? it may just be attached to one part, but free floating the other part. Very often, these look terribly difficult to get at, but if you are sure there's some adhesion here, where you detect zonules here, you can then use a cotton bud to indent the scleral, and that will be, uh, bring this into view, okay? so you can uh, lift up this lens safely. Uh, basic iris hooks here also helps you to see the peripheral attachment. All right? So we're going to talk about material. Again, suture material should be 9-0 or should use Cortex, right? I'll show you the glue lens. Okay, this is, has been popularized by Amar Gawal. So you have to open up conjunctival after marking uh, diametrically opposite uh, positions. This is very important. If you don't mark it properly, you will end up with a lens that never gets marked. Then you create these limbal base partial thickness lateral flaps of the conjunctomy. And then you lift it up, then you do the same on the other side, put in an AC maintainer, okay, remove vitreous, vitreous pressure, very important, you can see an uh, MPR 23 gauge uh, needle going in and then the track can be going in to clear all the vitreous, especially this area where you retrieve the haptics, right, you don't want to be snagging vitreous and having endless complications with macular edema and retinal detachment. So this lens was iris fixated, so I just released it a little. Hold on to the tip with uh, special forceps that don't damage the tip. Retrieve it. Okay. In this case, I was asking my assistant to fold, but generally I don't need an assistant today with the technique that I use. This was attached to the iris, so I'm just converting it to just scrub haptic fixation. So uh, the forceps will just grasp the tip. Okay. Now you're both there ready. So when you start, you might want to just mark. Your needle, this is a 27 gauge needle, 26 gauge will be easier to use. And that will just mark the track for you so that you can find the, the hole that you've created for it to go into the tunnel. Okay? So you don't want to crimp the tip because once you crimp the tip, it will not be threaded nicely into the tunnel. Whether or not you'll be RL centered depends on these two fixation points, whether you respect that. Okay, whatever you do at this point, you cannot adjust the centration. And this is just using glue to glue back the flaps. This makes surgery easy. It gives it a very catchy name of a glue lens, but certainly it's not held by glue. It's held by its intrascleral position in a snug tunnel. Okay, so the air is just to make sure that the wounds are dry, and then you remove the air, and then you have a perfectly centered lens. Um, <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to show you side base flaps. This is what I published a letter to the editor because I had a case where I had the standard flaps 
there was a haptic ramp across the junction between the dissected and non dissected sclera, it actually leaked and had to go back to the suture. So I thought, well, you know, if I had a flap that entire, uh, covered the haptic as it ran across into the tunnel, uh, from the sclerostomy across to the tunnel completely, then it's unlikely to leak. Right? So these are pinched flaps. So the lucky seven sign that Amra described to grasp the tip as you inject the legs. Okay. And the other haptic is then introduced. And again, you hold on to it and just grasp the very tip so that we pull it out, there's not get kinked. If it extends beyond, the tip extends beyond what you grasp, you will end up with a kinked haptic and you will not be able to thread it easily and what you're seeing being done here. So now I'm using a 26 gauge needle. It's bigger, it's easier to get in. And you see that when this flap comes down, you're going to have the haptic completely covered. Okay, so you won't have any leak at all on these flaps. Okay, you can do that as well. Air so this patient that you see post off actually looks pretty good. It just made out the side flaps. Okay, then we start to move to no flaps, right? People say, oh, it took so long, it's you know invasive, you'll decide the conch, you'll spread the conch, patient gets glaucoma. So this is a Yamani tank. Okay, mark down the opposite, no conch dissection, 2 mm posterior, 2 mm away. So I'm grasping the LL the lens forceps and I'm going to reuse this lens so very careful you remove all capsular remnants and the bridges here so that you can do these gymnastics in the eye and I remove all bridges strands that could possibly be there and brought it to the anterior chamber so you place this in a position which is opposite to a glued lens so you go you slide the conch and you just go a little above this it's like a 20 degree angle of approach and you enter where you think your point of fixation should be, alright, so should you again, using 30 gauge meters, you can see these are very soft and spindly, hard to control sometimes, okay, at this point I want to go in, then you go in, but the problem with this technique is that it's, it's sometimes a blind pass, right, you think you're going in, but you may not, then you thread this in to the 30 gauge needle, it's important that if it's a thin wall needle, right, and then you pull it out, and then with the low temperature constantly, just go, don't touch it, and you just fall this ball or a flange, alright? <clears throat> and then you can just position this lens. And the important thing is exactly where did the haptic go uh, get retrieved to the sclera, okay? Because if you are really diametrically opposite, you will have a perfect outcome, okay? Now, of course, the advantage is that you know the lens is so much more stable than if you had it fixed to the iris, right? So, uh, Yamani recommends this this uh, uh, needle for Botox injection, really. So it's different from our standard one where you know, the wall is thick. In this study case, the <coughs> wall is really big so that the haptic can stay in without any trauma, right? Or you can use a 27 gauge needle. Regardless, whichever you use, as long as the haptic can fit in to the bore of the needle, you can use it. Alright? So if you're going to implant the lens, it's best if you were to check it out outside the eye before you implant the RL and struggle with retrieving the haptic. Right? Which lens to use? This is actually the best lens to use. It's a Zeiss lens. It was something that was bought over from Aaron Scientific. It's called CT Lucia 202 because of the haptics being made of a different materials, not P, uh, not PMMA, unlike the other uh, blue haptics that we're familiar with. It's made of this substance called polyvinylidin chloride, <clears throat> and this has got a fantastic memory and is indestructible. So you can kink it, but you go back to original position. Unfortunately, Zeiss tells me they've stopped production of this lens because the demand is low. Right? The thing you need to have is low temperature cautery, not high. Right? So as mentioned uh, earlier, you want to have the correct placement of the lens. <coughs> you want to fix here, you want to place the lens 90 degrees to it. <coughs> Which is different from Amaragawa's technique. Right? And the positioning, you want to enter 2mm posterior to the surgical nimbus. About 2mm away is where you start your spiral tunnel. Right? And this needs to be 
slightly above. So if you want to MM here, then you will go a little like 20 degrees above the waiting time. And when you enter <coughs> the visceral point, right, what you want to do is to have the angle that's slightly about five degrees down from the iris plate. Okay? So I'm just showing you another case here, using a 27 gauge needle. Right? Again, richest management. <coughs> Generally, I do not like to use a Yamani because I can't get it always perfect. Okay, and when you, you don't have it perfect, really it's difficult. Okay, you can see me picking up this lens by indenting. I've caught the capsular back here. And for this, you need to strip the capsular bag. Okay, if you don't have a sawmill ring here, so really it's quite easy. This bag is like a dead bag, no response at all, it's perfectly clear, and it's easily done. Right? So you put this now in the anterior chamber and you want to put it in this position, okay? 90 degrees, right to your final position point. So you go in there, and when you think you've reached this point, it's a 90 degrees down, but you don't really know where you've entered. Okay, thread it in. So this first step is always easy. Now, you can pull it out because you're scared, you know a system, you might drop it and do this fixation point first and then you can do the other. If you have a small pupil, doing this technique is difficult, right? If you're, especially if you're cauterizing one end first. And it's preferable if you put an iris hook here if you're dealing with a very small pupil because you can see that you're going to distort this lens tremendously because this is anchored. Now, Yamani's original technique used the, 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 the needle dangling there and many people feel very uncomfortable not knowing what it does to the retina. So you can have a very perfect outcome if you are perfectly symmetrical in your entry of approach to the sclera. So to, to improve the uh, reproducibility of the saturation, Yamani has actually come up with a guide for the needle that is made by Greider that helps you in the angulation that we described. Right? Because if I said to you 30 degrees, I said to you 5 degrees, you cannot reproduce it. And especially when you come with the needle towards yourself, it's far more difficult to control the direction. So actually, I don't use the technique. Uh, I use my own uh, method, which I find is much simpler and more reproducible than the root lens and more reproducible than the neck. So I just create a partial uh, thickness scleral incision like a slip. All right? So first of all, with the single piece RL, I'm going to explain this because we cannot thread the haptics uh, through. Although I've seen uh, Gabor Charlotte do this, you know, intraspheral technique even with this uh, Microsoft lens. All right. So first, retractomy, explain this RL, cutting it out. Okay, and then let's go to this this little bit right there. Now we insert the three piece lens. <coughs> I did a superior approach here. It's a very high myope. And then we're going to retrieve this. So you can see we have a partial spiral thickness incision here. 2 mm posterior, sorry, 1.5 mm posterior, 2 mm wide. Scrostomy is through the center of this mark. And then the 26 gauge needle trap. And then we thread it in so we don't have a flat there's less dissection done right that's limited and then we thread this in and at the end of it if it closes well because there's no tension across this slit you don't have to suture it but if you feel it's more secure like i often do i would still create that and then i like to do a peripheral erotomy to equalize the pressure behind and in front of the lens so you can reproduce and get this very well centered as long as you're marking the diametrically opposite. I'm going to show you very quickly another case. So in this case again, we're going to get rid of this lens because it's a single piece lens. So this just to show you 1.5 mm posterior, partial thickness, all right? It needs to be deep enough, but not too deep. So three main incisions here and one in the center to expand the lens, all right? So when you do all this, you want to have a tight, sealed anterior chamber with all the trapping, you do that first. Okay, remove 
remove all the pictures you don't want to put on any pictures. Use Chinese known as it's alive to help you with that. Okay, nothing cut around the haptics. Very important. Bring it into the anterior chamber. You see, once I hold the lens, I don't let go. Right? You would cut this. Now, when you have infusion coming in, you be very careful. This half can actually drop. So I suddenly, I, I quickly move it under the other half to form like a, a plate support. Okay? And then you remove this. I do a peripheral iridotomy first so that when my lens goes in, I don't have a problem of unequal pressure and sudden deepening of the anterior chamber. This is a 23 gauge spirotomy. This is a CT Lucia, which I love, but unfortunately, we're going to stop using this soon. Alright? Catch long haptic, catch the tip, pull it out, hold on to it. Do the same for the other side, catch haptic. Okay, going through the spirostomy, catch the very tip. Hold on to both so you will never drop the lens. Okay, and then get more share of the needle. Track with the 26 gauge, and this is just some new forceps I designed to grasp the haptic perfectly well, so you can just insert it. Okay, and then you look for the centration of the RL to determine how much of this haptic you need to insert. So, roughly, that's the length, that's the length of the tunnel that you then create, and then you just thread it in and check that the RL is centered. If not, you can thread more haptic or less haptic in to center the RL. So this, I find, is the most reproducible <clears throat> and it takes like 30 to 40 minutes to complete. But at least I know that I always have a perfectly centered lens. <clears throat> we now just quickly talk about sterile suturing. Right? So this is a single piece lens and you know it's difficult to suture. Uh, this, but it can be done if it is found within the capsular bag. Okay, so I'm going to use again my suture snare technique. And because this part of the uh, capsular bag is, is attached at present but may become loose, I've decided I'm going to fixate both points. Okay, this patient has retinitis pigmentosa, you may notice it reflects a little bit yellowish. Right? And these patients have got loose zonules and so this is a progressive disease. Although this looks fine, I'm going to suture both. So this is a suture snare you're familiar now with, with one paracentesis here to snare a free segment of a suture. Now this second one, the needle goes above, not through the bag like the first one. <clears throat> and then it snares the other end of the suture over the haptic. So one under and one over. I'm going to repeat this, all those zonules are intact still, they are stretched and loose. So one under. Okay, so just one paracentesis here. Thread a free segment through, snare it out. Okay, this is the second one, incision point. This goes over, pull out the snare to bring this other end of the suture through. Okay, so once you've got that, you retrieve your sutures, like what you've been seeing all along, and adjust the tension between the two in order to center your RL. You can see that this actually does a good job for this patient without having to expand the lens at all. Okay, and this is very useful if you've got a toric lens that you don't want removed from a patient like this. Okay, but this patient must have no interest in the front of the eye. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult okay, because you have to deal with pictures as well. But you can see it is really very well centered. So, a simple technique, right? So, we talked about so just now already. This other patient has a toric lens, and this lens is flying around okay, in the vitreous cavity. So, to preserve the toric lens, we're first going to mark the position to, to refixate it to. And look at the marks there. I've actually matched it to the desired axis. Alright, now I'm going to dissect open this capsular bag. I'm going to remove all this reformed lens material 
and then place in a capsular tension segment because this bag can open up very beautifully and insert the capsular tension segment and use the suture snare technique to retrieve the sutures like what you've seen in other cases. So this will provide the support that is missing. Right, so again, in a very similar technique, we use a snare, thread it through. I think you've seen it so many times, you can do it in your sleep. Okay. You can sleep through the case and do it, right? Snare, pull this segment out. And hey presto, okay, you fix this lens. You can always adjust the segment position, right, so that this is perfectly centered. Remember, always tie a bit more tightly and then let go, and then you have a perfectly centered bag that's well matched with the axis. Okay, this is to show you another case where the EDOP lens has gone down. And I have fixated one point. The rest of the zonules gave way. In fact, you saw in the surgery early. So I, I said, it's okay, it's fine. No problem, I'll get it up for you. Okay, you don't have to sacrifice the lens. Where is the lens? I know where it is. So I'm just preparing everything. It's there, right? Just indent it and you'll see it. And it's flipped, so I have to flip it around. It around the suture because the suture was twisted, you can see indentation shows you the same body. Now you've got everything in the right identical position, and then grip the other side of the rim, my boat's rim, and then now I'm going to support the back. Okay, now this is so fibrotic, it's hard to slip in. Now you have the lens in position, you can release this. Right, the bridges is still behind. And I'm just repositioning this rim of the right so that the outhouse is not topped to one side. So I can center it. And then this is really very simple. I've got the back held open. I insert the capsule tension segment. I raise this eyelet above the fibrose capsule rim. I use this now to retract the iris. So it creates space and I don't puncture the capsule back when I come through. You can see everything I'm doing, everything. It's really, I mean, it looks so complicated, but really it's quite simple once you break down the steps. Okay? So this one again, just to retrieve the sutures from the Hoffman pocket legs. Okay? Then it's just center the whole thing so that out of the center, when you tie, you want to slightly over tighten. Okay, and make sure that you get your eye all centered at the end when you put this suture back. Okay, so this patient had his vision restored for them. Iris fixation is a technique I do like to use. So we'll talk about the um, <coughs> OPEC artisan lens. So in this patient here, you can see the lens is gone in concave side forwards. So you flip the lens and now we'll go behind the pupil, right, behind the iris. You can do one at a time, put in some minor step, constrict the pupil, enclavate it by lifting it up. You can just see the contour, right? And you feel, and then you have to have some faith and let go. Very important to remember your ear droppings, okay? So you can do this very quickly within five minutes, but your incision has to be large, okay? So let me show you the type of iris fixation that I prefer to use, and you can reuse the standard three-piece outhouse. So in this case, it's somewhere there, so I just track the iris so that I can have a better view of the lens. Pick it up with capsulosis forceps anteriorly so that there's no bridges caught. Hold on to the outhouse, start projecting. You don't move. It's, if it's something that you found deep within the eye, you try to you make sure it's deep until you cut all the bridges, sever all the attachments. So you don't pull on bridges at any time. Okay. Remove all the capsular back remnants. I don't let go of the lens. I'm still holding on to it because I held it in the position I normally hold it, just between the two haptics. Put in some viscoelastic, put in my step, raise the optic to anterior of the iris, and then put in my fixation needles. And this is a sepsis sliding knot. Okay, this one you have to look up yourself because really there's no time to go into details. It's just 
holding out the suture between the areas and this uh, incision here and once you externalize it, throw the knot three times and then one reverse and one forward. Once you've done both, the out of center, you cut it, you release it, and you have a nice rough ripple. I always like to do a PI there. So in summary, techniques of IR fixation uh, using appropriate instruments has been demonstrated. It's important to have the right instrument. Right? The procedure of choice to me really is iris fixation because it's very simple, it's very quick. But if you want to have very good stability, especially in a younger patient, then intraskeratoptic fixation of the RL is the way to go, especially if you have had previous iris fixation and it's failed, right? Or the eye that's got no support at the back, right? So if you remove all the ridges, then the lens becomes very donitic if you suture it to the iris. So if there's any kind of support, I tend to want to use iris fixation. But if there's no support posteriorly, as in a VR case, then I will move to intraskeratal haptic fixation because it is so much more stable RL. Thank you very much.